Oh, I've got Matthew Motts here with me. Matthew, how proud are you to be leading England's white ball team for the first time in a landmark series against the Netherlands, 3 one-day internationals? Yeah, very excited. I think this day, uh, you know, obviously been in the job about a month and uh, only been in the country for seven or eight days, but uh, it's great to get back on the tools. Had a, our first training session together today. Um, it was exciting. I, you know, I think it's, there's a really good vibe amongst the group and uh, we're looking forward to three big games out here. And this is a ground you've actually played on too, isn't it, yourself? Yeah, I have played here many years ago. It seems like a lifetime ago, but uh, yeah, played a couple of games for Holland and uh, we're reminiscing. It was a couple of the Gloucester boys uh, on this trip that I played against in that game. And uh, yeah, it was some fond memories. So you've taken the new white ball head coach role. What are you going to bring to it? And what do England need to uh, have that they haven't got already? Yeah, it's a good question. I think it's a team that's been functioning quite well and um, you, you can tell they're in a pretty good place. The, the meetings that we've had, are, there's a really relaxed, uh, fun vibe around the group. I think Owen Morgan has obviously um, got this team in great shape over the last couple of years. So for me, initially, a lot of it will be about observing and just seeing where we can make some small gains. But uh, yeah, not, not, uh, not trying to reinvent the wheel, that's for sure. How strong is the 14 you've got here? Very strong. I think um, you know, one of the big things that we've been talking about is it's a great opportunity for some of those young bowlers to come in and, and show what they've got. There's some, you know, obviously a fair bit of white ball cricket coming up. They haven't played a lot in the last uh, 12 months or so. So from that point of view, I think it's going to be exciting. Uh, one of the keys that we want to take away is, is just working a little bit on those death options. Um, so looking for some players to step up in that area. You've got a couple of uncapped players here, David Payne and Luke Wood. Are they going to get their first caps? Is everyone going to get a game here from the 14? Oh, there's every chance. I think we, we will uh, look to change up the t team a little bit. We haven't brought any spare batters in, so uh, and we're just trying to manage around a couple of the bowlers as well. So there's definitely a chance that everyone will get a run at some stage. This ground saw the third highest ODI score ever in 2006, 443. You've got some serious hitters in this uh, party, including Joss Butler. Is this ground Joss Butler proof? I don't know. There's not too many grounds that are, are there? And he's shown that particularly in the last IPL. But uh, look, I, I just think it's a great opportunity. As we said, we haven't played a lot together as a group. We're, we're, you know, a lot of people are sort of getting to know each other and having some, uh, you know, some experienced hands that know their, know their job really well. Um, yeah, Yoss will bring a lot to the table, that's for sure. I mean, how exciting is it to work with a batsman like him? He's come from the IPL, the highest score of four centuries, an absolute colossus in the one-day game. Yeah, well, the first thing that struck me is just how modest he is. You know, I, had a, I just had a good chat to him at the airport uh, the other day, and he's, you know, all he's talking about is is what's best for this team. And I, I think that that's something. Obviously, this environment is really cultivated well. That no matter what they've done in different environments, they really look forward to coming back here and and do, doing their best for the England white ball team. Matthew, how much of a wrench was it to leave Australia women to take this job? It was it was always hard, I, you know. Certainly leaving um, a lot of great people, to, not just the players, but the, the staff group there that we, you know, had some lifelong friendships over the years. But you can't do it forever, and I, I, you know, I was always mindful of, of um, going before I was pushed. And, and uh, we certainly had some really good success, particularly in the last three or four years. And it's no perfect time to leave, but I think it was as close to that as it, as it could have been. And Brendan McCullum already has triggered a renaissance with a Test team. What did you make of that incredible win at uh, Trent Bridge? And can we expect something similar with you here? Yeah, I think the, the thing that was most important about that is they, they didn't have it all their own way and they had to fight back in, in both those games at different points, absorbing test cricket to watch and I think that's what the public's been craving and um, yeah, it's a great start and I'm sure they'll be enjoying it. They've, they've played with a really positive mindset um, and probably set the tone for the whole summer. A word on Owen Morgan, he's a, a World Cup winning captain, a leader, he's 35 now, people wondering how long he's going to go on for, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think it's up, uh, essentially it's up to him a little bit. I think he's he's already said to me that if um, if his form doesn't warrant being in the top six um, over a period of time, then he he'd consider walking away. But uh, personally, for me, I hope he stays around for a very very long time. I think he's already seen what an inspirational leader he is. Um, when he speaks, people listen, and you know that, that sort of leadership is, is something you should never take for granted. And um, yeah, he's he's one knock away from from being in form. What about the Netherlands? They've been beaten by the West Indies here recently, 3-0. But they were competitive. How much of a challenge are you expecting? Yeah, I think, I think they're good. And I just bumped into Tom Cooper, who's um, come in. Uh, so he's, he's a fair player as well to just drag into their lineup. Um, they're always a dangerous team. I think the, the Netherlands have got a great culture of competing. And I think that they, in all their sports, they, they love to compete. They're always agile on the field. They take their chances. So, um, look, I think it, it's going to be a good batting. We're having spoken the groundsman. So... 
for us, if we get a chance to, to put a bit of a marker out there and, and then, you know, as we said, work on some of those new bowling options, I think it will be a really good test. And, uh, Maki, you've got five left armers in this squad. Is that by accident or by design? Uh, look, I think the, the, the truth is there's been a few injuries, and I think, um, you know, but these guys are, are, are fully deserve their spot, and I think there's some really exciting talent, and they're just seeing in that net session there some great all-rounders, like, with great ball striking as well at the back end there. So, yeah, we've got some real bases covered there. And, and as I said, we're leading into a big year of T20 cricket. Um, as many people can put their hand up as possible. Yeah, I know some World Cup winners here with you as well. I mean, Rashid and Roy and, and Moeen and Butler and Morgan. I mean, there's some serious talent you've got here, even though you're missing some serious talent too. There is. I mean, it's, uh, it just keeps coming, and that's it's exciting. I think a lot of teams around this, um, you know, this phase leading into the T20 World Cup will be building their stocks. But um, what it, what it does gives you options, you know. So it's a different matchups for different teams, um, and they, as I said, these guys have got a great opportunity to show what they've got. Um, nothing you can't buy experience. So getting games under their belt in in a World Cup year is really important. Um, and they've got a great opportunity to show what they've got. So how would you compare the depth pool in England compared to Australia? Oh, I think it's, uh, Australia's been building quite nicely as well and, and once again it comes down to the formats and access to the players. I think um, certainly there's, it's an exciting pool of, of batters. They just keep coming here. Um, yeah, hey, pretty pretty equal. I mean, obviously Australia won the last T20 World Cup but in many people's minds um, England were one of the best teams there as well. So. It comes down to you know, winning the big matches, the semi-finals, and, and obviously giving yourself an opportunity to get there first. Have you had stick from friends and family about taking this job? Yeah, plenty. <laughs> yeah, I have. Uh, but yeah, most of it good-natured, and, and a lot of people really excited. Um, just found out today we, we've, we've secured a place in, in Cardiff in Wales. We've got some great friends there, so that's really exciting for us as a family adventure. We, I've spent a lot of my life in, in the UK, and, and I've got some great friends over here. So. Yeah, particularly the English friends are very happy about me, me coming over here. The Aussie ones, uh, yeah, not so much, but uh, they'll get over it in time. And what do you think it says about women's cricket that you've landed this job after seven years with the Australian women? Yeah, I think it's a really exciting phase for women's cricket. I think um, yeah, it definitely, show, <clears throat> part of me, shows a lot of credibility in, in getting into the female pathway. And I've always said then the next, the next challenge is to get a female coach uh, coaching in a high-level men's team, and that's something... Certainly in Cricket Australia they've been working on and I know in England it's, it's, it's going to come to the forefront as well. But for me it, it does give great credibility and, and I'd, I'd, I'd like to think it's a coaching pathway rather than a male or female coaching pathway and we, we get the best people in there in the end. Just finally, Matthew, the forecast here is glorious for the next few days. The match on Friday looks like it's going to be lovely but not so good on Sunday. Are you preparing for rain at the weekend? No, I never do. Um, you, you just got to take the good weather when you can. I've learnt that over many years being out here and, and just soak it up and enjoy it while you can. Can't control the forecast, but um, at the moment we'll, we'll, we'll run with it and see what we get. Matthew, thanks so much for your time and good luck with your rain. Thank you. Matthew Mott, England's new white ball head coach, looking forward to the first of three ODIs with the Netherlands here on Friday.